Today, we are going to explore the various ways on how we can use the deck of many things along with the book of many things. Game Masters here, and among the bigger questions that I've been asked is, how do you use the deck to create adventures? And the answer is complex, but also easy at the same time. I'll explain. The book explains multiple ways that the Dungeon Master can create an adventure using this deck. The by and far easiest way is to use uh, card sparks. You're going to draw a card or, or more multiples and use the image depicted to spark your imagination. For example, should you draw the moon card, you'll notice that there is a temple looking uh, structure under the light of a crescent moon. I might have the adventure take place with the party seeking out a, a mystical temple that only shows up under the light of a non-full moon, but that the inhabitants are all werefolk. You simply let it spark your imagination. You can build inspiration decks, but do a little homework first so that the cards correspond to a specific monster or location, uh, perhaps a magic item. And when you're stuck in the adventure, just kind of shuffle the deck and, and make a random pull and, and let that card's corresponding monster, location, or, or item play out. There is also the journey spread, and this will look very similar to a tarot-style reading. You'll shuffle the deck, then decide how many days' worth of adventuring you are going to do. Draw two cards for each day. So if we were going to go out for three days, we'd pull six cards. You don't want to look at them yet, but place them face down, now two per stack, across three stacks. This represents three days. Flip the first card over on day one, uh, on the day one stack. This is going to be your challenge card. The image depicted will represent the challenge that the party will face that specific day. Let's assume that they're going to defeat a uh, beholder. Should they find it and defeat it, that's a success. Should they never be able to find it, well, that's, that's a fail here. The second card is then turned over, and either the party will receive a reward for their success or a ruin should they fail the challenge's ask. So should they have succeeded, it is possible that their journey, the, the character's journey, on their next challenge will see that their travel time has decreased, allowing them to arrive at the destination in half the time they thought. Should they have failed, however, and receive the ruined version it is possible that the entire party is mm, plagued by nightmares while trying to sleep that night, thus preventing them from getting a long rest. You then would uh, repeat that process for the next two days' worth of cards. Now, Let's say you want to go a bit more complex with it. You can do a nine card spread, and this is all detailed out in the smaller book, the, uh, the card reference guide, but you'll draw nine random cards, placing them out like, uh, like this, where the base card will represent what the characters were doing before this specific adventure begins. On top of that is the adventure card, and this is what starts off the adventure. Next to that is the journey card, and is what will happen kind of along the way uh, towards the destination. The next card is the entrance card. This is used to describe the entrance to the adventure's location. Then you have three cards stacked. These are the challenges that the party will face. And then, of course, you have the guardian card, and uh, this is kind of the big bad evil guy. And under that is the treasure or, or your, your uh, reward for completing that adventure. Broken down, it works like this. The party gathers card might be the jester card. Uh, you've started off at a fair, perhaps the, the witch-like carnival is in town, and everyone has met there. Then the Adventure Begins card is the Comet. Uh, panicked goblins begin to pour into the fairgrounds, and while they're not intent on fighting, they are clearly running from something. Now you need to go on the journey, and the card flipped over is the Fool card, but it's backwards. Upon heading toward the goblins, um, they, they said uh, where the monster was at, the, the party instead runs across a bard, except that bard is a con artist that will attempt to charm you into giving up your possessions. Should you best that conning bard, you continue on to the entrance of the monster's lair. This card, when turned over, uh, might be Uriel, 
and it too is upside down, which means that you may be heading underground. But using some inspiration from the card's description found on page uh, 31, and because this is in the place spot, it says that the card represents a place with a commanding view, such as a watchtower. So the place you are seeking is not a dungeon, but it's a tower that the goblins built, but that the monster chased them out of. You reach the Goblin's Tower and are now faced with the first of three challenges. The Donjon upside down is the first card, with the Donjon being a place of imprisonment, and with the card being upside down or, or reversed, then perhaps something is not imprisoned, but something escaped. The goblins kept wargs, but they escaped their pins and now hungrily roam the halls of the watchtower. Should you defeat them or corral them back into their pins, then you can move on to challenge two, which is the Fates card. It seems that there is a hag that is attempting to make the watchtower her new home. She warns the players that fate is not on their side, but will not attack unless she is attacked first. Coming to a resolution with the hag reveals the third challenge, the Flames card, also reversed, which on page 36 cites that a creature is fleeing from a more dangerous foe. Perhaps you encountered the goblin boss, but he has a desire for the party to dispatch of the monster that drove his goblin pack away. Turning over the Guardian card reveals it to be the Balance card, which is used as inspiration for the big bad evil guy, perhaps a Helmed Horror. And should the party defeat that Helmed Horror, the, the final card, is the, the Treasure card, is turned over to reveal the Gem card. At this point, we might provide a fistful of precious gems to the party as their reward. Now, before we take a super up-close look at some of the card's meaning found within uh, the card reference guide, I need to thank these adventure supporters. Their contributions to my channel make it so that I can create content like this. And if you'd like to see how you can become a YouTube or, or Patreon member, I'll leave a link down in the description. And feel free to give this video a thumbs up, because the more thumbs up it gets, the more eyes will see it. And I appreciate that. The card in this book are set up uh, alphabetically. So the first one will be the Apparition card featuring a Beholder. And you'll note that the page is broken down into an upright meaning and a reversed meaning. The upright meaning is exactly as the card was meant to be interpreted, whereas the reverse meaning is its opposite. So the Apparition card, if encountered in any of these slots in the uh, Adventure spread, would mean the following. Person. Someone who has a distorted view of reality. Creature or trap. This would be a creature that is possibly corrupted by the influence of the Far Realm. Uh, perhaps the Cow Daisy from the Fandelver and Below book. Place. A location where the laws of physics or magic are in slight chaos. Treasure. A piece of art that can reflect a warped view of reality. Situation. A stream of energy or a mass of creatures might have entered into our realm from the Far Realm. Now, for the reverse of those. Person. You may encounter an individual that is dedicated to eradicating corrupting influences of the Far Realm. Creature or Trap In spite of the Far Realm's influence, the creature in question has simply resisted. Place There was once a place of uh, far-off realm corruption, but nature has overcome and grown over that area. Treasure A piece of art that is useful against aberrations. Situation. A person or group of people that have taken up arms against aberrations. As we move through these, you'll note that each one has those same topics for descriptions. Person, creature, or trap, place, treasure, and situation. But also their reverse meaning. Also know, too, that you do not have to have this exact deck of many things. You can use any version you may already have, or may use uh, even a deck of cards, like a simple uh, pack of, of poker cards. But as I understand it, should you purchase only the digital version of the book of many things, then you will not be getting access to this deck or the uh, reference chart. Another thing to note, because there is a lot of 
use your imagination, but use the deck itself as inspiration, there's also nothing to stop you from using another one of Wizards of, of the Coast's IPs, Magic the Gathering. We've actually done this in the past where we take just random cards or, or even open a booster pack and we'll craft up an adventure using just those cards as inspiration. Of course, creature cards could easily become monsters for the uh, party to fight. Land cards would be the terrain over which they journey. While one could easily argue that you don't even need the physical deck of many things for everything that I've described in this video, you'd be right. You, you, you don't. It's based heavily on using them as inspiration. And honestly, you can get that from almost anywhere, from the, the back of a cereal box to, I don't know, perhaps even the, the, the latest TV show that you've watched. But then there is the pretty factor. I mean, these cards are really good looking and fun to look at. The artwork is great. I love that gold foil sheen. But you can also use these as a tarot-style deck in which you can... Okay, you, you, you can have an NPC read a player's fortune using their own deck of many things. For example, in chapter 16 of the Book of Many Things is a goblin fortune teller who will tell you your fortune by reading from one of uh, the deck of many things cards. But... Should you prod him a bit and, and take on a short quest, he'll let you draw one card from his deck. But yes, you, you will experience the effects of that draw. Keep in mind, too, that the context of this book, that uh, this deck of many things is just one version of it. The one we originally found in the original Dungeon Master's Guide from Advanced D&D days, it, it still exists, as does the version found in 3rd edition, 4th edition. Uh, even various ones that popped up in Dragon Magazine over the years exist, as does the initial version that we saw in 5th edition. Hell, even the, in the context of this book, the decks that uh, third-party creators ha and homebrewers have crafted about all still exist. And to an extent, this is where the deck of many more things comes into play. The extra 44 cards that we are now able to add to this. Simply put, this new book, the, the, the book of many things, does not change what happens when a card is drawn from this deck, but it does expand how the deck can be used. Should you draw the skull card, the, the avatar of death still shows up and is still going to demand that you battle it uh, and, and you alone to the death. But there is also a way of being able to take that card's essence and use it against an enemy, or use that card for other purposes. That is what this new book is all about. Now, I've tried to give a complete rundown on how the deck and book are used when combined, but you can easily see how the answer is a bit complex when asked, how do you use the deck to create adventures? But also easy at the same time. This can be a great tool to use in both creating an unpredictable adventure, but also simply in, in, in going balls to the wall with a total party annihilation if you want to, <laughs> or even customizing your own deck to be a fair bit tamer. The options here are pretty limitless. As I've pointed out in past videos, I'm trying my best to give you information about what you can expect to see inside the material, just so that you can decide if it's worth it or not. I don't like buying blind. And with local game stores closing up, there are a lot of us that can only get this stuff from places like Amazon, where all we're going to see are the basic product images and, and zero content from inside the book itself. That's what I really want my channel to be about. I want to be able to present to you the material as if you were standing in the game store, checking out a copy for yourself and having a chat about it with the store owner. To that end, Talk to me down in the comments and let me know what you think about this deck and the, the book of many things. Is it right for you? Is it, is it going to be a fun thing for you and your table? Or is it going to be a hard pass? Also, be sure to subscribe as I certainly have a lot more videos to bring you about this and other games in the future. Oh, and also check out this playlist. It's all about the book of many things and it's only going to grow as I add more content. What other unique ways can you think of to use the deck of many things? Again, comment below and until next our paths cross, maybe May you not encounter the monster found on page 162.